Well, you saw overnight uh, several people, several health professionals, urging that Plan B was put into action. And Sajid Javid was, was you know, very clear, we're not going to do Plan B, um, but they're keeping a very close eye on it. And they're urging people to get the booster jab. There does appear to be, doesn't there, some reluctance for people to go and get the booster jab. What would your advice to those people be? Get it. I had mine yesterday. You know, I've, I've got two sore arms because I'm of that age and so on. And, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty trivial apart from the, the nuisance of having to go to the vaccination centre or whatever it is and, and getting... Uh, the, the needles are very sharp. They don't, you don't feel them as they go in and bingo. You've got a, a boost to your immunity for at least the next six months, having probably got immunity that's been starting to go off. It doesn't go off completely by any means. But uh, any way that we can stop people getting ill enough to go into hospital, and the booster jabs are a very, very good way of doing that, is, is basically absolutely essential. Now, my concern is that we have so many cases, and, you know, Javid was talking about 100,000 cases possibly in the fairly near future. That's an enormous amount of virus that's out there challenging people, even people who've had the vaccine. We know the vaccines work very well. You know, they're not more than 90% effective, but that means they're not 100% effective. And we know that some people do get ill and really get quite sick, even if they've had the, the vaccine. With the, with the, um, the boosters, that's less, less likely. So boosters, very important, as, you know, the press conference was, was, was emphasising. My worry is there'll be so much virus about pressing on the population at, at, at large if it gets to 100,000, uh, we may have to go into lockdown. And the oh, one way no, to avoid that... No, no. The one, way to avoid, the one way to avoid that is to have Plan B. Because Plan B is not that much different from what we've got anyway. OK, you don't have mandatory masks, but you have, you're recommending, you know, he was going on quite at some length about... And you have to wear it when you're on the tube and all this kind of stuff. And working from home, well, you know, that, that's only advisory anyway, and a lot of people are doing that. And, and the vaccine passports, well, we have those in Scotland. There was a lot of toing and froing about that. And we have about half the number of cases per population uh, in Scotland than in, in England. So maybe there's something to do with the fact that we've had these passports for a couple of weeks and we're stopping these super spreader events in nightclubs because we know from, from basically what's happened in other countries that when the virus gets into a nightclub, people are hopping up and down. It's very hot. It's very close. It's, it's the ideal place for the virus to get about. And so if you've got vaccine passports, I know it's the infringement of your liberty. It is. But, but, but um, it's an infringement of people's liberty if they infect other people who then go on to die from it, if you see what I mean. No. I, mean yeah, I, no, do I, I, mean, I mean, Hugh, you know, it seems to me, um, if I'm going, to, let's say I'm going to a major sporting event and we do have a very, very high number of cases, I don't object to taking a test to showing that I'm negative, but I do object to the very concept of a vaccine passport and being asked to show it virtually everywhere I go. Uh, and I suspect it would attract a fair degree of non-compliance. On your first point about the jabs that you went to have yesterday, maybe one of the reasons for the reluctance is everybody was told, get double jabbed and that'll be it. Bingo. Job done. Now they're being told, Go and get a booster jab. Oh, by the way, whilst you're there, get a flu jab as well. And there's, you know, a few quite sceptical people saying, are we going to be jabbed forever? No, we're, we're jabbed annually. Well, <laughs> the age groups that I belong to, uh, we're jabbed every year for flu. And clearly we've been jabbed for, for COVID. But, you know, we may have to do it on an annual basis like we do for flu. And... The risk group that really is affected by COVID are old people. I'm not going to use the word elderly because I, I object to it. Uh, seniors, let's put it like that. And, you know, we, we have a much harder time if we get infected with COVID and we have a much harder time if we get with flu, if we get flu. And, you know, the, the idea that, you know, care homes and flu have been very, very bad you know, that places. Well, care homes, if flu goes in there, it's not quite as bad, but nearly as bad as with COVID, for example. So the two viruses are similar in that respect. They're different in lots of other ways. But having a flu jab is, is good, sound common sense. Now, 
the, the, the point that one has to make about the flu jab is that it's only about half as effective as a COVID jab. You know, when, when we started making vaccines, my test was, will the COVID jab be as good as a flu jab, which gives you about 60% protection? Well, they're a hell of a lot more than that. You know, they're 90% protective, even more than that. And so, on. Um, you know, the, the, the COVID jab is a very, very, very uh, brilliant sort of success story. And there are lots of different ones available. But if it's that good, if it's they're that good, protected. if it's that blooming good, and so many people have had it, why are we talking, why are you talking about potentially not just Plan B, but a lockdown happening again this winter? If it's really that well, good. Yeah, well, the va no vaccine is 100% protective. That's the problem. And uh, clearly, the, the immunity wanes. Not everybody who's had the jab makes strong immunity. Most do, but some don't. And there are all sorts of folk out there who've had cancer treatment, immunotherapy for leukemia, that kind of thing, who won't be making a very good immune response, whatever vaccine they're given. But they're, they're, you know, if they meet COVID, ooh, bad news, bad news. So, you know, there's a balance to be struck here. There's a balance to be struck here. Yeah. One of them, yeah. the flu, is that we don't know what's going to happen this winter. You, you can't make any predictions about it at all. It might be terrible. It might be last year when we didn't have any at all. And that's one other reason for having masks. That What mask wearing did was to keep the flu down at sort of basement level. And, uh, you know, we've, been, we've known that for 100 years. It, it has a, a, a very you know, bad effect on the virus and a very good effect on the folk who are eating it. So, so you know, Professor that's Pennington, why I'm going... No, no I get it. Going... I, I get it. You're telling us to get jabbed. You're telling us masks work. You're telling us that Plan B is coming. I find it a little bit depressing, but I suspect you're going to be proven right.